Hey guys, in this video we'll be going over modifications to the 14 millimeter ball nut, uh, ball nut, ball screw assembly for the G0602 CNC conversion. This is for the x-axis and this screw was made to my specification by Linear Motion Bearing 2008. If you need his email address for your own screw uh, custom made or if you want the specs for my screw, uh, let me know in the comments and, uh, and I'll shoot you an email. Actually, uh, check my GrabCat account. Um, gradcab.com, search for rust stuff, and I'll probably just list them there. Uh, this is the ball nut adapter. You'll need to make some sort of adapter. This will also be available on GrabCAD. And this basically mounts to the ball screw, or the ball nut, and, uh, and then you screw that entire assembly to the cross slide. In that shot, you could see that my ball screw, or my ball nut has been totally uh, modified. The one flange has been machined down, the bottom flange totally removed, a flat machined on the bottom. And uh, also you'll notice that the carriage, or the saddle, or whatever it's called, has also got a slot machined out of it. And I'll show you all of that footage here in a couple of minutes. Um, the screw that I'm using to hold this together, and I'm only using one cap screw, is a quarter 20 that I had to cut down because I couldn't find one that was short enough. Um, Originally, after I got my lathe finished, I ran the lathe just like this, how you're watching me assemble it. And it was fine for a little while, but that, that cap screw kept coming loose. A little blue thread locker was all it needed, and I have not had a problem in many hours of running the lathe. So uh, this system, although it looks precarious, has been robust enough, and I expect it's going to last. If I ever run into any problems, of course, you guys will be the first to hear about it, and I will annotate this video. Okay, so let's go over to the mill and show you how not to machine hardened steel. Uh, I've clearly got my RPM set way too high and I don't remember what it was, but I take a few passes and I keep turning the RPM down. What I settled on was about a thousand RPM and two and a half inches a minute. That's with a quarter inch four flute carbide end mill. And uh, you might be able to do better with a, uh, with a really nice name brand end mill. You know, I buy the cheapos. And uh, I did trash this end mill by the end of the project, but, you know, 13 bucks or whatever, so I didn't care too much. Um, let's see. Uh, step down and step over don't matter, matter too much. It just depends on how firmly you can hold on to your part. I believe I was taking um, no more than about 20 thou depth of cut, full width of cut. And, uh, yeah, it worked fine for both this part of the uh, ball nut and the other parts that I machine. And... Of course, you'll see those here in a few minutes too. So after fully removing one of the flanges, I used my scale and measured 80 thou. And I want to say that I ended up taking 20 or 30 off of the bottom side of the ball nut. And then I took the rest out of the rest of it out of the saddle. And uh, here you can see um, you've got to remove this back plate uh, to remove the saddle from the lathe. It was a total nightmare, and it was like working with everything coated in honey because it still had that cosmoline on it from when I bought the mill. You know, I didn't disassemble it to this point to clean it originally. So those three cap screws were a total nightmare to remove. Uh, but I doubt you're going to be able to, well, maybe maybe those of you who are more clever than I will know a way to do this job without having to machine the uh, the saddle. Anyway, um, here we are taking that 20 or 30 thou off the bottom of the ball nut. I didn't get down so far as to touch the plastic um, raceway that the balls in the ball nut move through. So uh, I probably could have even taken more had I needed it, but I didn't need it. And actually, I ended up taking more out of the saddle than I needed. I, I believe I went ahead and took that full 80 thou, and then I I probably overshot it by like 20. Um so uh, take measurements, be as careful as you can, check multiple times, and you can uh, hopefully remove as little material as you need. Uh, on the ball nut mount, there's a couple of ways to do this job. Um, I've got this really long, awful, high-speed still, two-flute ball mill. This is one of the first end mills I ever bought, and I just hate it. It's got way too much stick out um, for being high-speed still, but I keep using it anyway. Uh, if you don't have CNC capability, that's okay because the other way to make this radius would be to flip the ball nut mount up on its end and then make an interrupted pass and go down it with a boring head. And I, I actually did that on one of the adapters that I made on my G0704 during that CNC conversion. 
Um, although I don't think I've used that boring head since then. Uh, anyway, uh, or you can do it tediously with a million uh, passes using a big stupid two flute ball mill that you really hate. Either way, um, like I said, go check out my GrabCat account. You can get all the dimensions for this, or you can get the 3D model rather. And uh, here you can see... I don't have it assembled. I'm just holding it in place, uh, eyeballing it into position, and then using an awl, I scratch the two circles where I'm going to drill and tap for 1032. Um, because I knew the dimensions, I could have just laid this out. I, I don't know why I did it this way, but maybe I was trying to be more... I don't know what I was doing. I don't have footage of me drilling and tapping those holes. Here you can see the whole thing assembled, and then I set it on the... Uh, I set it in that um, carriage tunnel again and realized I needed to take more off. And here you can see I've got my feeds and speeds a little bit better. Notice half the chips are uh, blue and half of them are silver. That's probably because I've uh, destroyed two of the teeth and those ones are making hot blue chips. Uh, and then when I machine the ball nut mount, because this is just 1018, I can go quite a bit faster. And it looks like, what did I do this in, two passes? Yeah, I guess just two passes. So uh, not a big deal. And um, yeah, it ended up working really well. Let's see. Well, I guess we're going to wait. <laughs> okay, here we go. So the last step is to just drill and tap this um, quarter 20. And uh, you guys know what drilling and tapping looks like. So we'll just burn through this really fast. And then um, the last thing is to... What's the last thing? Come on. Okay, here we go. So here we're going to machine the saddle. I trammed it into position on that edge, and then I found out that these two inside edges are not parallel with each other and not parallel with the edge that I trammed. So I used several different camera angles trying to get some footage of me machining this. It all turned out terrible. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I'll let you watch this machining if you want. And... Um, I guess that's it. I'll catch you guys in the next video, which is going to be assembling the ball screw with the uh, bearing blocks. And that is its own problem. And uh, we'll get into that more uh, later. Thanks, guys.